There's times where you make a movie and everyone's like, oh, it's really great, and maybe it's amazing. Yeah, and it's not And then really there's great. times where they really mean it. Can you distinguish it too? Yeah, I think, well, look, in Australia, it's, uh, as of until last week, it was the highest grossing Australian film of the year. So mm-hmm. when you get box office results, you think, actually, maybe, maybe they do like it. Maybe it's okay, you know. So that's been wonderful, like seeing the way that people have embraced it in Australia, and particularly because it's sort of a little bit subversive, something a little bit different, you know, you don't know whether it's going to cross over, and it has, so it's been great to see that Brand New Day sort of being embraced. Do you, is it also, because it wasn't the play so spectacularly yeah. popular, then the question is, yeah, then everyone's, oh, well, the play wasn't better, I mean, you run it to that. Yeah, that's, that's I look, that whole, you know, anxiousness around adaptation is really legitimate fear, and I was really worried about that, taking it from a play that people loved to a film, I was like, oh, what if I get this wrong? You know, people are going to hate me. It'll be like, there's that girl who ruined that thing, you know. So, but after the screening we had in Broome, which is where it premiered and where, you know, the film is set and they were the most jealously guarding of their precious play um, and they loved it. So I thought, Phew, you know, if they love it, then I'm safe. What about right. putting the cast together? Now, I understand Rocky was an unknown. Is he a high school kid, right? Yeah, we just went to... We started casting in the town where the film is set, in Broome, so we just went to the local high school and just got all the boys to do these little skits for us and we found him on the first day and it turned out that he couldn't actually sing or dance at all, um, but we loved him anyway and we thought he had these great qualities, you know, this sort of naivety and sort of on the cusp of manhood and he had a beauty, you know, and an innocence and we just thought that that was more important for the character. He was really, in a way, you know, he'd never acted, but he was the character. You know, he was this kid who was considering having to leave his home to go away and be university, and he was, you know, having his first romance, and he was really the, he was the character of the film, Mm -hmm. so, you know, he didn't need to act so much, he just needed to be. Now, also, though, Jessica, Jessica's like your American Idol winner, right? She is, yes. Australia, what is it called? Yeah, Australian Idol. Oh, Australian Idol, okay. Um... Now, what about that? I mean, had she acted before? You knew no. she could sing, clearly. So how yeah. ner- were you nervous? Like, all right, I have this beloved play with two relative unknown. Well, she's not in yeah, the no, film. Yeah, no, I but... mean, unknown actor. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, um, so, you know, you're kind of... Yeah. It's a dicey proposition to begin with. It is. It is. And, uh, you know, I would have loved to have a fleet of, you know, world-class actors at my fingertips, but in Aboriginal Australia... You know, they just are not those actors. There were, you know, I screen tested quite a few people, but, you know, like 12 girls, maybe 10 girls who'd acted before. And really, you know, that's not a big, that's not a big um, repertoire or range to choose from. But again, with Jessica, uh, she, she had a quality that um, was close to the character mm-hmm. and she had this amazing voice and for a musical I felt like that was important and again she was the character she'd grown up in a remote community in a small town uh, she had ambitions to sing uh, she had an innocence about her you know she hadn't had a real boyfriend yet so she was at that age and so again she was close to the character and so she had a great instinct for how that character would feel because she was you know similar to it so that was my sort of insurance right was there, a, uh, was there a big, was there a rush among the entertainment community to get involved with this? I imagine a lot of actors like, oh, I have to be in this movie. Um, so did you? Ha- well, I mean, you got Jeffrey Rush coming in, and yeah. I understand that um, Ernie Ernie Dingo is a big shot down there. Um, yeah. What did they come based on their attraction to the to the material? Well, look, Je- uh, Ernie Dingo, in his case, he'd been in the play, so uh, and he was fantastic in it. I'd seen the play with him in it; he was great. So that was just like he's in it. There's no question. Um, just his availability was an issue and he agreed so brilliant and Jeffrey Rush had seen the play loved it and I mean in a way he had the most to lose Jeffrey because he had such a big reputation you know he'd won an Oscars he'd won Tony Awards BAFTAs you know and here he was agreeing to do this very bizarre small Aboriginal film you know and uh, playing a cameo so it just shows you how gracious he is that and how committed to the work he was to, you know, take a risk with a relatively ex- inexperienced director like me, a very crazy script, you know, a left of centre project, and, uh, you know, to give his time to do it shows how much of a great guy he is. Um, the, uh, can you talk about that, the Aboriginal cultural scene and, and your own path? Um, was, it, was it a difficult path as a minority? I mean, is it, are there a lot of obstacles in the way of a person like yourself? Well, look, I think, um, I think there is a lot of obstacles for Aboriginal uh, people in Australia. We certainly, um, 
you know, uh, we have the sort of colonisation process, you know, hundreds of years of... We only got the vote in 1967 in its context, so um, we struggle against the same uh, historical sort of injustices that sort of Native Americans do as a sort of a, as a comparison. Um, but in fact, uh, in the last 20 years, there's been a lot of positive programs to assist Aboriginal people to, in a range of um, jobs and environments, and certainly in the film industry there's been some programs there, and I've been a direct beneficiary of those actually. So I've had opportunities actually, in reverse experience to a lot of other people, I've had more opportunities, and um, those opportunities have led me to this point. So, you know, I'm really grateful that they existed and I've sort of had an exhilarated position. Um, and certainly there's a lot of support now in Australia for films with Indigenous content because uh, Australians see it as part of their history that, you know, we don't have that knowledge of our past or the Aboriginal past or the Aboriginal experience as part of our culture. So there's funding and stuff for films and, you know, for Indigenous storytellers to, to come to the fore. So I've been lucky to have been part of that movement. So it hasn't been a terribly difficult path, a path that... For me, no. I mean, the projects have been really challenging, but I've had a great run and I've had, you know, but I, I think the thing is that whoever you are, whatever minority group or not you come from, the work has to be good and it has to stand on its own feet, ultimately. Otherwise, like everyone else, you don't get the money for your next film. So um, all of my work, I think, has been consistently strong, which means that I get funded again to make more work and I work really hard to make sure that, you know, I the film gets can be the best it can. So hence in casting, you know, we bring in, you know, great people and uh, great crew to work with and hopefully it all pays off. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, pleasure. <laughs> Sorry to sort of...